Hello from Trend Signal for our review of the data and events, the week beginning the 3rd of July. Uh, the main theme of last week was the European taper tantrum, as it's been called, or taper tantrum 2. Uh, also with a bit of uh, UK confusion over when uh, or if interest rates will rise in the UK. Uh, just start with that, Mario Draghi, um, he of the president of the central bank, uh, seemed to inflame the markets a little bit with uh, his appearance at the um, central bank forum in Portugal last week, uh, a speech that seemed to encourage further speculation that the ECB was approaching a decision on tapering uh, their QE program. Um, Draghi at this conference or uh, forum in Portugal. He referred to the end of the deflation era as the Eurozone economy entered the reflation era. Um, I'm not sure that was what the message he quite wanted to deliver. Certainly it was a more confident uh, delivery or message. Uh, the market, I think, decided that the ECB would therefore need to dampen down their extreme monetary policy uh, or policies, uh, certainly um, on the um, Tapering, tapering of the QE side of things, um, hence the route of the bond markets and uh, subsequent slide in Western equity markets. Um, Friday actually saw this move partially reversed, but I think the damage had been done. Um, so maybe the markets are going to downplay any lasting effects of this bond slide, but um, it happened, that's for sure. You only need to have a look at the charts. Um, as for the UK markets, well, the Bank of England have managed to confuse pundits somewhat, whether sort of conflicting views coming out from Carney and um, Andy Haldane, the um, chief economist there. Um, the markets are predicting a near certain rate rise um, come March next year uh, and a 75% chance of a rate rise by the end of the year or sooner. Um, I have to say my betting is probably sooner. Um, uh, time will tell. It's the 3rd of July. There's some way to go certainly until the end of the year and, and certainly until March next year. Um, um, it seems that um, central banks are almost coordinating um, their efforts now uh, as they work towards lifting some of the extreme monetary measures that have been in place since the financial crisis. Um, I think markets can appreciate this. After all, normalization is what needs to happen. But I think the evidence doesn't always back up the noises coming out of the central banks, particularly uh, inflation. I'd say inflation excluding the UK here, obviously, which has got uh, a decent measure of inflation thanks to the collapse in sterling. Uh, but uh, inflation hasn't really improved as some would have expected and liked. Uh, notably, the Fed acknowledges the persistently low inflation rate, but believes it will get back on track. Um, uh, Janet Yellen, she who is normally a bit of a a dove turning a little bit hawkish. Um, anyway, we've got more of that to come in the minutes from uh, the last FOMC meeting. So uh, let's have a look at um, what's actually coming out um, this week. Uh, it is um, a week containing the um, uh, U.S. holiday, the Independence Day on Tuesday. So all the markets in the U.S. will be shut on Tuesday. That's the 4th of July. Uh, on, fr on Monday, um, leading up to that, they'll be closing early. You, you U.S. equities will be shutting at 1 p.m. Eastern Seaboard time, which is 6 p.m. our time. So they will be shut uh, on uh, early day, early closing on Monday and closed all Tuesday. Uh, on Monday, we've already had the manufacturing PMI out in the U.K., which uh, was surprisingly weak. Um, I'm a bit confused that the forecast was 56.4. Uh, I thought it would be weaker than that. 54.3 was the outcome in the end, slightly uh, hitting sterling markets. Uh, we then have the equivalent in the United States called the uh, Institute of Supply Management Manufacturing PMI, or ISM for short. Uh, that's out at 3 o'clock. Um, still quite a positive number, slight uptick from last month. Anything above 50 is in expansion mode, so well into expansion mode. Uh, we then have the um, chap I've just been mentioning, uh, Andy Helden, the Chief Economist from the Bank of England uh, and a member of the Mandatory Policy Committee talking at 6.30. Uh, beware, um, central bankers tend to move markets. Tuesday, apart from obviously the bank holiday in the States, we've got the construction PMI in the UK, uh, still a quite steady number, 55.2, a little bit lower than um, last month's uh, number of 56. Um, we then jump to Wednesday, and then we get the services side of the, the purchasing managers uh, index, um, uh, which is a lot more important than the manufacturing side, certainly here in the UK, uh, which 80% um, plus of our output comes from services. 55, sorry, 53.5, slight fall from uh, the month, the number posted in uh, June, 
although you might wonder if we're going to get a worse number looking at the manufacturing PMI. Uh, and then one of the main events of the week, aside from the non-farm payroll towards the end of the week, we have the minutes from the Federal Open Market Committee, the rate-setting committee of the Federal Reserve, the U.S. Central Bank. Um, this is the minutes, obviously, from the previous meeting. Um, there will be a, a particular interest, I guess, to the markets. Um, despite the low inflation, uh, the Fed has agreed to raise rates or had agreed to raise rates by a quarter percent, which happened a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what their thinking was on this. Uh, and we've heard that from Janet Yellen that uh, she believes that inflation will get back on target or on track. So uh, it be interesting to see more details of that 7 o'clock Wednesday. That can and will move the markets. It has that effect. Um, because of the bank holiday on Tuesday, uh, the ADP report, which normally comes out on Wednesday, is out on a Thursday. 181,000 uh, job, new jobs. Odd the um, way that these reports from ADP and the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the official data, seem to go in opposite directions last month. 253,000 reported by ADP, falling to 181. As a comparison, if we jump to the data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics due out on Friday for non-farm payroll, 175 from 138. So uh, I've got a feeling they probably will adjust higher, that 138, but the market's expecting 175 um, in uh, this July report. Um, jumping back again to um, Thursday, um, following on from the ADP report, we've also got the uh, ISM non-manufacturing uh, PMI report. Um, that's really the services sector, um, as we call it, the services sector here in the UK. They call it non-manufacturing, but that's an important number for reasons uh, mentioned about the UK, a lot bigger sector than that manufacturing. 56.6, so a slight downtick in the US. Uh, then we have the delayed um, EIA report on the crude oil inventories. None comes out on Wednesday, coming out on Thursday at 4 o'clock. Um, and then we jumped to Friday, last day of the week, manufacturing production from the UK, but the main event um, of the day will be the non-farm employment change. We've already discussed it, 175,000 new jobs, an employment rate of 4.3% unchanged from the previous month. We've also got uh, the Governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, uh, talking. Uh, that'll add more fuel to the far that probably doesn't need it at the moment. Uh, and we've also got the um, G20 meeting, uh, which is a two-day meeting starting Friday ending Saturday. A um, bit of a talking shop that's taking place in Hamburg, I believe. Uh, um, they're going to be talking about trade, climate change, migration, and, and other subjects. Uh, but a big gathering of the top 20 nations. Uh, that's why it's regarded as a bit of a talking shop. Nothing too much gets agreed. Um, but of greater interest, I think, will be whether Trump meets Vladimir Putin. Um, they're both uh, attending the uh, uh, session, the G20 session, uh, but they've not met up. Certainly, not, they certainly haven't met up since Trump um, became president. So uh, that'll be uh, something we're all going to be watching out for. Not sure that it's going to move the markets much, but there we go. Uh, um, and that's it. Thanks very much for listening. Bye for now. If you would like more information about trading the right way, TrendSignal is giving you the opportunity to see and hear about its services live at a free online seminar. Take a look at the TrendSignal website for the latest events and to book your free place.